AT&T came today and installed the fiber. And what comes in from outside is that black cable. And this is so wild. What comes out is this tiny, thin piece of fiber. And then it comes into this switch, which then converts to a, an Ethernet Cat5 cable and then runs to the house. That is so cool. After the fiber internet was operational, but before I disconnected my coax cable from Comcast, I had, of course, to run speed tests to compare the two. So right now I'm still connected to my Comcast coax internet. That's pretty good speed. 50, 60 megabits per second. That's pretty good. I assume the upload speed's gonna be five or six. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so now let's switch to the Wi-Fi network on the fiber and go to there. All right, connected. Let's run a speed test again and see what we get. Moment of truth. Holy cow. <laughs> Over 300. Ooh. What's the upload speed? Oh, <laughs> man. Wow. Yeah, even using the Wi-Fi router that's provided by AT&T. Holy smokes. All right, well, there you go. Here is the combination modem router device supplied by AT&T to come with the new fiber install. It's on the kitchen counter. This is a central location in the house, which is good. And I want to move it up to the top cabinet so that it's not taking up counter space. And what I also want to do is to drill a hole into that top cabinet that is not visible from down below. So I've got this pill pack, <laughs> the days of the week pill pack that I put up there as a visual reference. So those bottom two days, purple and teal, are not visible when you stand down on the kitchen floor. So I think if I drill my hole, yeah, if I drill my hole lower than that, the hole should not be visible. I essentially use the ethernet cable as a fish tape to pull up the power cord. I then connected my existing Netgear Nighthawk router to one of the output ports on the fiber modem. All right, I can tie these wires up at some point later. And there you have it, high-speed fiber internet, centrally located in the house, working great.